Hi folks, David Waring here again with InformTrades.com and today's lesson of the day. In our last lesson we looked at the structure of the Federal Reserve and the body within the Fed which is responsible for so many drastic market moves, the FOMC. Uh, now that we have an understanding of this, we can look further into monetary policy and what exactly is expected to happen from a markets and therefore trading standpoint under differing scenarios. So let's get started. Okay, so monetary policy is anything which relates to action by the Federal Reserve to influence the amount of money and credit available in the economy. To understand exactly what this means, one must first understand the concept of fiat monetary systems. The United States, like most major economies, has what is known as a fiat monetary system. This very simply is any system which uses a monetary unit, in this case the U.S. dollar, which is not convertible to some commodity and generally precious metal such as gold. Fiat money is money that is backed by the credit of some entity, normally a government, and in this case the U.S. government, uh, and the value for which is derived from its relative scarcity and the faith placed in it by the population which uses it. This is important to us as traders because the fact that the dollar is not convertible to a commodity such as gold gives the Federal Reserve the ability to increase or decrease the money supply as it sees fit, or in other words, to enact monetary policy. With this in mind, there are three tools available to the Fed for enacting monetary policy, which are open market operations, raising or lowering the discount rate, uh, or raising or lowering reserve requirements. The most common tool that the Fed uses, and therefore the one which we will cover, is open market operations. Once we have an understanding of this and how increases or decreases in the supply of money affect demand and prices, the other two less commonly used tools will be more easily understood. Uh, through something which is known as the Open Market Committee, the Fed increases and decreases the supply of money um, by buying and selling U.S. government securities. When the Fed wishes, wishes to reduce interest rates, they will increase the supply of money by buying government securities uh, using money that was not in, available in circulation before they made their purchase. As with anything, when additional supply is added, everything, uh, everything else remaining constant, price normally falls. In this case, the price that we are referring to is the cost of borrowing money or interest rates. Uh, conversely, when the Fed wishes to increase interest rates, they will instruct the Open Market Committee to sell government securities, thereby taking the money they earn on the proceeds of those sales out of circulation and reducing the money supply. When supply is taken away, everything else remain, remaining constant, price, or in this case, interest rates, will rise. When the Fed increases or decreases the supply of money, they're doing so to try and directly influence something which is known as the Fed funds rate or the interest rates uh, in which uh, banks charge to each other for overnight loans. With this in mind, we now know that when we hear the Fed has lowered or raised the Fed funds rate by a quarter of a percentage point or whatnot, for example, um, what has actually happened is they have increased or decreased the supply of money in the economy. As you can now hopefully begin to see, if you've watched our lesson on fiscal policy, monetary policy is a strong tool which can affect the business cycle uh, in much the same way as fiscal policy. In tomorrow's lesson, we will look at exactly how this is done, so we hope to see you in that lesson. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below, and good luck with your trading.